think it's really worth remembering that the Olympic and Paralympic Games is the biggest event that will be shared by people in this country within living memory. The Games are not coming back to this country in the lifetime of most people that are alive today. And I think this, we must remember this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to showcase all that is just fantastic about this city and this country, whether it's the, it's the diversity, the creativity, the multiculturalism uh, of, of London and the UK, and of course it's the tolerance. But if you look at the business opportunities where world-class British businesses have that platform and the global reach, not only to help deliver a great successful games domestically, but to reach for markets in other big sporting events for years to come. There's something really important to remember about London. No Olympic city ha has ever delivered a Games with such a large proportion of its population travelling by public transport every day of the week. There are something like 12 million public transport journeys made every day in this city. So we actually do this on balance pretty well. Clearly, there will be separate challenges that a Games will produce, whether it's about traffic flows or, or, or people journeys. So making sure that with our partners, Transport for London and, and the boroughs, we really are working very in a very focused way to, to mit put mitigating actions in place in the hotspots. We know what those hotspots are. They're going to be St Pancras, they're going to be King's Cross, they're going to be Canary Wharf. And we just want to make sure that we've got our traffic demand, demand management planning really solidly in place. And, and the good news is that the right people are asking the right questions, they're all facing uh, in the right direction and doing all the things that we need to do between now and the Games to make sure that we create precision in the Olympic route network. The athletes need to get to the start line on time. The journalists and broadcasters need to be able to get their images out with precision. Uh, and the people that are making the games work uh, are the ones that are able to get to those venues to make the games work. So it's precision, but it's also about allowing London as best as possible to work for people that are not involved in the games. And I tend to really think of that as business as unusual, because again, you know, this will be the first time in 64 years that the games will have come to this city. You know, we know Canary Wharf, for instance, will be a hotspot. We've already, through Transport for London, started talking to the 25 big corporates in Canary Wharf. Some 80% of people within those organisations have already agreed to work flexi time. Simply put, you know, they won't be getting on the tube between 7 and 9 in the morning when people will be going to those venues. We want them to avoid the tube on the night, for instance, of the opening ceremony when we know lots of people will be using that route. But for other companies to think about whether they've got uh, their headquarters or their satellite businesses on any of that route network, on any of the venue, near the venues, on, for instance, the cycle course, whether they can actually start really helping their teams, their staff, their, their, their colleagues to figure out how they can plan around the games and of course a lot of people in those organizations will probably I hope be taking their holidays in order to coincide with the celebration so there are some really practical things that we are doing at the moment in conjunction with transport for London and also making you know asking businesses that rely on deliveries getting freights goods and services into their venues if they're on any of these route networks to, to figure this out in advance and communicating through Transport for London as early as we can as to what the routes look like, what these extra demands are going to be and helping businesses plan around it. Between 2000 and 2003, Sydney, Australia generally picked up a tourist dividend of about $3 billion. So first of all, you want people to come to your city feeling charmed, looked after properly, service levels as high as you can possibly get, so you get repeat business. Tourism, very, very important. But also, even in Beijing, eight years after Sydney, Australian businesses, off the back of their expertise and success honed at the Sydney Games, uh, accounted for 
about a billion and a half dollars worth of consultancy business. So it is absolutely instinctive, if you think about it, that a company that has successfully been delivering a large part of a very complex project, which is the Olympic Games, are likely to be the companies that the next games go to because, first of all, they will be up to speed with that technology and the way the movement has, the games have moved. They will also have the hands-on experience, particularly with people within that organization that have the skill sets to go on and do that again. And already, our partners, companies like Deloitte, companies like BT, some of our infrastructural partners, have already won themselves contracts in Sochi and at the Summer Games in uh, Rio de Janeiro in 2016.